It's not supposed to turn. It's supposed to go in a 90 degree angle like that, back and forth. De well, depending on what speed. My hand is just basically going the delicate, the low delicate speed. <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, um, the motor will drive the pump and force the water back up into the tub and the agitator shaft oscillates because there's another gear, a small gear on top. It's next to the spin gear wheel. And there's a cam there's a piece underneath the shaft that's called a cam in the agitator cam. And that's what I think that is I think that might be what keeps the agitator from the shaft from turning like around like that like that. I think that's what it keeps. I'm not sure actually. Cuz it it locks into it locks into like flanges or like um um it's a valley shape kind of thing. You know, a valley versus a mountain shape. It locks in two lumps that the uh wall walls of the transmission has, the bottom of it. Basically, they would use a cover to keep you from get, sticking your fingers in there and to keep the oil in there. They put oil in there for the gears to move smooth and not grind and, you know, kind of thing. And the clutch drum, there's a clutch drum on top of the transmission. That's basically underneath the agitator. It's like in the very center. It should not turn at all during the agitate cycle so and then basically the basket drive the the drive block and the drive tube there's a drive tube and a drive block that's a there there there's some more pieces that are not supposed to turn during the agitation and the bottom agitator how basically how the clothes get agitated how this works is the motor will drive the transmission the bottom piece, which is this piece with the fins on it, it'll turn back and forth in a 90 degree angle. At a 90 degree, depends on the models. Like older belt drives turn, they had like a 180, 185 degree angle, so something like that. And basically, this would turn back and forth. And oh, I don't know if you see my video about how to repair the agitator dogs, but if you look down in there, you can see that though there those pieces, those little things sticking out that look like fingers or thumbs, those are called the agitator dogs or cogs, some people call them that. And this is the agitator cam that holds them in place. So basically they won't fall out of place or anything. And that's the bolt that keeps the agitator in one piece. So, basically, I don't know if you will be able to see it uh, quote, on a quote unquote. So, basically, this would this agitator is going to turn. Basically, the bottom part is going to move back and forth along with the cam and the agitator dogs. Those dogs are going to lock up. See, see them extending out. They grip onto. You can see teeth. You can see that there's teeth in the inner walls of the agitator. They grip onto that, and that's what locks them. But if the agitator dog's teeth are worn out, then it's not gonna. It's not gonna be able to grip on it. It's just gonna slip and slip and slip, and nothing's gonna happen. Basically, the bottom, how the water goes, is just the clothes will agitate. Basically, how it works is the clothes will rotate, come down. It'll go up to the top, go down in, go down into the center, and then back up through the sides. It's basically like a rollover kind of thing. This is the dust cap. This is what keeps water out water and dust and fabric softener from getting in there. 
Sometimes, sometimes this cap lately has been slipping out. Place, I have no idea why. Something up with it. And that's basically how it works. You saw my, I, some of you saw my video on how to replace those, and they did. So that's basically how the agitation works. And because of the, the, <coughs> the interferer with the agitation, the tubs probably. <clears throat> the tub's probably gonna move back and forth like a quarter inch or so. There will be movement, so that, but that's normal actually. So then, when the timer, it's when it's the agitation agitation cycle is over. The timer's gonna stop the motor, which I think about like right here is where it stops the agitation and starts to drain. So then the motor will start again and then the motor will basically dro uh, rotate on a counterclockwise or um, not counterclockwise <laughs> uh, that's the agitation turn so uh, it'll turn on a clockwise which is this way and the pump runs and the impeller runs the other direction so then it really it turns really fast with a lot of air and the and then it creates enough power say uh say like my hand uh let's just pretend my hands the water traveling through the pump it's going to the propeller the propellers turning the water forces down so fast up through the drain hose which is back here like I showed you that's the drain hose goes up and down into the uh, down into the drain that's down there and that's that's the that's the blah, 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 you know water sound the splashing sound that you hear from back there that's the water going down into the drain so <coughs> and then once the water's emptied out and the tub's empty the air pressure decreases in the tube and once the water is drained out basically how how this works to keep the tub from spinning is that I don't know if some of you notice know this but there is a neutral drain pack they call that because it's they it, they call it neutral because it doesn't do anything it just drains us so the drain, the neutral drain pack will engage the transmission and <clears throat> prevent, prevent the clutch drum from turning while it's draining. So <clears throat> then, um, basically, uh, when the water's empty from the tub, the timer will stop the motor for about, on our model, it takes like four seconds maybe three seconds at Kenmore 500 series that took a while actually longer than this one so that just just depends on the model so depends on the timer so and once the motor is stopped uh, the timer will start the motor again it's on the same direction it did on the drain counter uh, clockwise um, and then that's the time when the clutch drum is part supposed to start turning and the neutral drain disengaged the disengages the spin gear and the spin gear is turning really fast the clutch drum the clutch drum the washer will spin like at about like 640 rpms that's what most people are saying um, the basket drive block is driven by the clutch turning the brake and drive tube and then it drives the black basket drive block and that connects to the spin drum which is the thing with the hole the, the basket with the holes the spin drum will turn and once it, kept, and once it catches up full speed <coughs> uh, um, I'm not <coughs> sorry <coughs> excuse me guys um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, oh, uh, 
um, the washer will pick up speed, okay, and basically, um, when the spin starts, uh, I've heard this on washing machines actually, not from people, it's, I've actually listened to these, and this is what happens. When the motor is be, is p only picking up, it's when it's just picking up, it will it you will hear it has a little less power on it or a little less power than when it, what it does when it's full speed. The pump will make a, a or you know whatever, and it'll spin, and then the motor when once it's at full speed the motor will get all the power or get more power you'll hear it's getting you'll hear it, it it's increasing the the power is increasing a little and that's what gets the spin drum to spin so the lid switch is what you can hear the click the lid switch how this works there's a striker on the hinge or not the hinge but the door there's a striker, that's what most people call it. I call it a striker too. This po the thing that sticks out, you see how it points directly at the switch? See how it's sticking in that hole? And when you close it, the striker will push down on the door. So, that's basically how it works, and that's what if you open the lid and you put something in there then you're gonna see the action with the uh, lid open depending on some models newer models like the Kenmore 500 you just gotta unscrew the hinge and hook it up put it down or just there are two screws a lot of you guys know this but see those two screws right there you gotta unscrew these Take it out and push it down. That's how it works. So, this is the bleach container. That's where you put your bleach. What we actually use is um, what we actually use is you see the detergents over here. We have this is all from Melaleuca. That's the that's the best company. I think that's re really the best company to buy stuff from. Or to order stuff from. This is the fabric softener. They call it Mellow Soft. They call this Mellow Power. And they call this Mellow Bright. And that is what we use as bleach. It's kind of as bleach. You put it in there and it's actually a less harmful chemical. It's actually not harmful at all. So then when the spin cycle is over, the rinse will begin and the same process will just continue going and same as the wash part the first cycle of this so basically I think that's um, basically this tub this tub ring right here this thing with the yeah this thing that goes around that goes above the tub it, and, that, and then it has like these these like layouts, these two layouts on it with the little things sticking up like that. It's kind of like that. No idea why they put that there. <laughs> um, that's there for to protect water from leaking out of the tub because basically it'll have a seal in case the washer overflows. Then that way it prevents an overflow from from leaking out onto the floor and then you and then you have big trouble basically this kind of also helps to protect the washer when it or uh, not protect this kind of helps the washer when it stopped to break the tub or not break the <laughs> not break the tub but like slow the tub down with along with the uh, break that's underneath there so um is there anything else uh, basically on the bottom of the tub there will be two hoses one connects from the tub to the pump and the other connects from the bottom 
lay or from the bottom opening of the pump goes through the machine and that's that hose that I showed you that comes out the back and goes into the drain drain the the drain whole thing stand pipe whatever you have so um that's basically about it um next video I'll probably be talking about how to use your machine correctly maybe the following video after that I'll maybe show you how to clean it maybe I, I don't know I think I will probably because you know you gotta do that with these machines look how disgusting our machine is yeah that's gross um so basically that's about it oh I got a red bat red, one red bar for battery so that was about it and thanks for watching I'll catch you guys later on my Kenmore Washer 7-2 account so take care and thanks for watching catch you guys later